Good morning, boys and girls. It's Miss Jessica. I've missed you all so much. It's been weeks and weeks since I've seen you last. Last time I saw you was in February. It was a long time ago. We had our Thailand mission trip and I was looking forward to sharing so many things about that trip with you. And then we got home and our team stayed home on travel quarantine just to be safe and we're all healthy. So thank the Lord for that. And then we went, went to not having church in person, but online, which I still love. I love to be able to see, uh, hear the message online, but I've really been missing Kid Zone and all of you. I just want to give a couple shout out and say hi, Hattie and hi, Raina and Ian and uh, Ethan and Karsten, all the Robinson crew, so many of you, uh, Natalie and Brecken, I miss you all. I'm probably missing a whole bunch, but I miss you guys. And I just want you to know that I've been thinking about you and praying for you. And I thought today we could do a special Kid Zone illustration from home. So this is my house and I'm at home right now. And David, Mr. David, our Kid Zone helper is actually behind the camera today. So thank you, Mr. David, for that. Uh, today, I wanted to look at a verse in the Bible. It's from Matthew 7, right out of God's word. Matthew 7 says, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds his house on a solid rock. So that's our memory verse today. So if you want to get it out and uh, memorize it today, it's Matthew 7, 24. So Jesus is talking to his disciples about a house. Have you ever built a house before out of Legos? Today, David, I had David build me uh, a little baby house out of Legos to illustrate our, our parable today. In Matthew 7, it's very, very short. It just says this. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And like I ever said, Jesus says, Therefore, whoever hears these words and put them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house upon a rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it didn't fall because its foundation was on a rock. But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house upon a sand. The rains came down and the streams rose and the wind blew and beat against the house and it fell like a giant crash. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority, not as one who teached the law. So Jesus used this illustration to describe our lives. Our lives are like this little house. And we can choose to build our lives upon a firm foundation, or we can build them on sand. A firm foundation is building our lives on Jesus' teachings and his words, on the, on the Bible and what he's given us. Sand might be, maybe you're building your life on uh, doing your best in your own effort. Maybe you're building your life on, on Minecraft this week. Maybe that's what you've been focused on. You've been so consumed with playing Minecraft. As soon as school gets over, you're like, I'm going to play Minecraft for five hours. I'm sure none of you are really doing that at home though, right? Or maybe Disney Plus or Netflix, right? Those things are all things that are in our lives right now, and they're not bad things. It's just that we can't build our lives on those things. Because what happens? What did Jesus say if we build our lives upon sand? What happens when the wind and the waves come? Well, let's find out. So we're going to put our house right there. And today, to represent the wind and the waves, we have some water. Now, the wind and the waves in the, in the parable that we talked about are actually trials and hard times. I think we can all agree that this coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus, is a hard time for all of us. So here we are. If we are, all we're doing is watching Netflix, eating junk food, maybe playing Minecraft all day. Let's see what happens to our firm, to our house right here. When the wind and the waves come, Whoa, it's starting to get hard. We watch, oh no! What happened to our firm foundation? What happened to our house? <laughs> it just went splat, didn't it? 
Well, let's see if we do what Jesus asked us to do. Now, those things aren't bad. Like I said, we, we have Disney Plus in our house. My kids have been playing Minecraft. But we can't build our lives upon those things. Those things are sinking sand. We need to build our lives upon God's word and his foundation. So it's important, boys and girls, to still spend time with Jesus, to get up early maybe, get your Bible out, your children's Bibles or your Bible app, and spend some time with God. Have your parents read with you. Maybe spend some time praying together. When we build our lives upon God's word and we hear what God says, he says, do not fear for I am with you. And he says, surely I will be with you always till the very end of the age. If we build our lives upon those promises in God's word, let's see what happens to our house. When the wind and the waves come, whoa, the house is able to stand because it has a firm foundation. And that firm foundation is Jesus and his word. So boys and girls today, if you're at home and maybe it's been a long few weeks for you, I know it's been, we've had some trying times in our home. Um, this room, I just want to remind you that God is what we need to build our foundation on. So just spend some time with him, spend some time praying, do what you need to do to make your life built upon God's word. Love you guys. I also mentioned when um, some of you at church, we talked about how when we, when we went to Thailand, we were going to work on the church foundation. The church in the village that we went to, the old church, uh, had termite damage to the foundation. So it wasn't doing so well. Like when we walked through it, it was a little rickety, made me a little nervous. But uh, we went to build a new church foundation. And that new church foundation was going to be made out of cement. So we worked super hard. We stirred cement stacks and we built, <laughs> we built the new church foundation. And now they have a really firm foundation for their church and it won't be destroyed by termites. So I also, in Thailand, I wanted to share a really fun story that I shared with the kids in the village. Now, the kids in the village, uh, they spoke Korean, and some of them who went to school spoke Thai, but uh, they didn't know a whole lot of English. But they, uh, well, we were able to share a story about five different colors to be able to share the gospel with them. And I had an interpreter, of course, who helped me, and she was very helpful, and we were able to share the story with them. Now, this, this story is the story of what Jesus has done for us. Now, this week we have something very special happening on Sunday. We have Easter, Resurrection Sunday on Sunday, um, and of course, Good Friday on Friday. So as I tell my, my gospel illustration here, I'd like you to remember what happened this week, 2,000 years ago um, or so. And I want you to remember what Jesus did for us. So boys and girls, today, I have here the color black, a black heart. Now all of us, before we knew God, sadly, we have a black heart. This represents our sin. We all have our own sin. The Bible says that we've all fallen short of God's glory. Now that might mean that we've lied before, maybe we were angry, maybe we were mean to someone else, maybe we didn't love our brother as ourselves. Well, those are all sins and God wants us to love him and to love one another and to honor him. But without God, this is what our hearts look like. They're full of sin. So our first color today is black. And I actually made it into a heart, so it's even easier to remember. Our next color in our story today is red. Oh, can you tell what this is? The red cross. Now this week, we have Easter week. And as we remember what Jesus did for us on the cross, uh, Good Friday is the day we celebrate that where we just stop, stop and we remind ourselves of what he's done for us. Does anybody have a one, or does anybody wonder or know why this is the color red? It's for Jesus' blood. When Jesus died on the cross, he made a way for us to be free from our, our sin and to know God and to be close to him. What he did was enough and he was the perfect sacrifice for us. So our next color is red. So our first one's black, next one is red. Now, when Jesus died on the cross, he did that because he loved you so much. He's, he died for you because you're so special. He called you chosen. He wanted you to be free from sin, and not to have to live a lifestyle of sadness and bondage and just of sin. So he made a way for us by dying on the cross for us to know him. 
And when we accept what he did on the cross, and we live and obey and follow Jesus, he comes and he forgives us of our sins. And he makes us as white as snow, the Bible says. So our next color is white. And it's a white heart because it symbolizes what Jesus did for us on the cross. He made us as white as snow. He made us clean from our sin. He for he'll forgive you if you ask for forgiveness for your sin. So now we have black, dead, and white. Oh, I love our next color. Now when Jesus, when he died on the cross, he didn't stay in the grave. He rose again on Easter. So on Sun Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we get to celebrate that Jesus rose again from the dead and he's alive and well. And on that third day, he rose from the dead and we celebrate that on Easter Sunday. Not only that, but he, he said he ascended into heaven and he's seated there now next to his father. And that's why our next color is gold. It represents what Jesus did. He made a way for us to heaven and he's there right now, seated next to his dad and he is king. So I made this next color uh, gold to represent heaven because in heaven it has golden streets, the Bible says. And to represent the crown of Jesus being our king in heaven. So the next color is gold for heaven. And if we follow Jesus and love him and obey him and ask him to forgive us from our sins, we have that hope of heaven as well. So that's our next color today. Our last but not least color is green. It's actually a green leaf. And it represents our new life in Jesus. When we when we come to Jesus, the Bible says he makes us a new creation. He gives us a, he gives us everything we need to live for him and to be godly and to follow him. And we do that by growing in our faith. That, that means building our lives upon his word, by reading his word, listening to his teachings. But it also means by spending time with him and praying and going to church, whether it's online right now or in person when we can, um, meeting with other believers and growing in our faith and also sharing our faith with others. So today, that's our last color. We have all five colors of our story, the gospel. Black is for sin, red is for Jesus' blood and what he did on the cross, white is for forgiveness from sins and what he did for us, gold is for heaven, where Jesus is, where we have the hope of going someday, and also green is for growing in our faith, growing and following Jesus. So today, boys and girls, I just want you to to reflect on that. And if you want to pray with me right now, I just want to give you a chance. Maybe you're feeling like this house over here. That <laughs> it's been a hard few weeks. It's been hard for adults too. Don't worry, you're not alone. But guess what? We can have the assurance and the peace that passes understanding when we build our lives upon a firm foundation of Jesus. So I just encourage you today, if you're maybe needing some peace, Maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you've had a long couple of weeks of battling your siblings in your home and you're just needing some time with God. Let's do that right now. Let's spend time with Jesus and let's pray together. Dear Jesus, we come before you now. We thank you so much for your wise words. And we choose right now to build our lives upon your firm foundation, your word, the word of God. Lord, we thank you that you have spoken promises over us, that we are chosen that we are set apart, that we are loved, that we are your children, and we just thank you for that. And this week, Lord, if there's anybody that just needs to put their hope in you, we ask right now that they would do that. Lord, we thank you for what you did on the cross. Lord, that you made a way for our dark, sinful hearts to become as white as snow, to be forgiven from our sins. Let us experience that forgiveness as we come to you. And Lord, please forgive us for all of our sins. And Lord, we accept what you did on the cross and that you rose again, we believe that you rose again on Easter. And Lord, you also gave us hope and a new life in you that we could follow after you. And this week I ask that you bless every boy and girl, help them to build their life on you in Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys so much. I cannot wait to see you again. God